What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Psychopath Exposure. My name is Kita. Today, we're going to be talking about the differences between borderline personality disorder, BPD, and narcissist personality disorder, NPD. We're also going to sprinkle some psychopathy in there. I just got a comment from somebody that left a comment and I thought it was very interesting and I'm going to read it before I give my analysis and feedback on that. Um, so why don't we just do that right now? He says, I will make a point about BPD that I think it is a mistake to generalize and vilify the disorder. There is a lot of discussion by professionals about ditching the BPD diagnosis altogether because in part it can be misdiagnosed and because of the overlap. There's a real argument that half the people who get diagnosed with BPD actually have CPTSD or even bipolar disorder, while the other half are covert malignant narcissists. It has been proven though, that BPD can be successfully treated with dialectal, dialectical behavior therapy. All I'm getting at is be careful with just automatically putting people with borderline in the same category as narcissists and psychopaths. There are a lot of distinctions between BPD and NPD, but one key element is that the underlying motivations behind the behaviors are quite different. Borderlines are very self-destructive and have a lot of internal issues. However, they don't attach to relationships for supply like narcs do. They attach for their own sense of identity, hence why the disorder is undercut by a chronic fear of abandonment because losing the person they have attached themselves to is like losing their entire sense of self. I'm not saying it's good to be in a relationship with them. It is still very difficult and destructive for the other person in the relationship. But it's too simplistic to just write them off as evil, so to speak. Narcs and psychopaths, on the other hand, are a different matter. Well, thanks for your feedback. Thanks for your feedback. Um, I agree with some things. I, I have a difference of opinion on other things. And I, let me tell you why. Um, I'm not a psychotherapist. So the, the feedback I give, the talks I make on the channel are not necessarily from a psychotherapist point of view. And I'm, I'm going to keep your comments here because there's some points that I, I don't want to forget. Uh, I like to give practical advice from my own experience, having dealt with borderline personality disorder, having dealt with narcissist personality disorder, having dealt with psychopaths, having dealt with all sorts of toxic people throughout the journey of my life. And I think a lot of us have to. We just didn't know what it was. We didn't know um, that these labels existed. We didn't get um, educated on it. Maybe there was YouTube didn't exist at the time. We didn't find the answers. We didn't ask the right questions okay ever since i experienced my encounter with a psychopath you know obviously i've spoken to a lot of people uh professionals in the matter a lot of psychotherapists a lot of uh well first of all my mentor works as a social worker he works with um sociopaths on the daily let's just you know to simplify matters um, he's been doing it for over 30 years. He works with a lot of psychologists and psychiatrists on the matter. Um, he sees uh, the foster children, how they're brought up, how they come in, the the disorder in the family, what happens to these kids if they come in at such an early age. And you see the destructive behavior, how it progresses, how it progresses, how they manipulate each other, how they manipulate the foster care Um uh, worker that's assigned to them, how they try to manipulate the the, the, the parents, the, the foster parents, things like that, how it progresses. Um, good friend of mine works in a psych ward um, in another state. I'm not going to say because you'll be able to pinpoint exactly who it is. Uh, so I want to keep that anonymous. Um, but having said that, I still speak from 
my own just personal common common sense type of thing is what I like to say. So I will agree that it's not easy and it's not a good thing to be in a relationship with someone with borderline personality disorder. It will destroy the other person. It will destroy the other person. It is going to make a living hell out of the entire thing for the other person. Okay, even even when the thought, right, from the point of view of the borderline, from the BPD, the thought of losing that person, it's like losing their life. I know exactly what you're talking about. I've seen that. I've seen how hysterical they get at the idea that you're going to walk away because you're tired of the abuse, but they can't help it and they continue abusing you. Okay, and that's why a lot of times I use the terms interchangeably because of the overlap like you pointed out, um, we're, you know, life is short and we're trying to heal and not stay in toxic situations that whether or not we got ourselves into that or whether or not we were blind to it. Now that we know, now that we know we got to get out, we got to get out. Um, there is a lot of overlap and I do, I do believe that there are a lot of misdiagnoses or people misdiagnosed out there, of course. I mean, sometimes a doctor will give you, like, like you, you go get a second opinion from another doctor. How many times have I've, I've had to go to another doctor? Because I just knew that the first doctor didn't know what he was talking about a condition that I had, right? Because I had done my own research on YouTube. I had done my own research on Reddit. I, have gone, I had gone down the rabbit hole and discovered, I was like, no, I know what I have, and I'm trying to communicate this to the doctor, and he just doesn't get it. And then you go to another one, and they're like, no, dude. Like, and they don't say, dude, but this is what you have. Okay? And that's happened to me many, many times before. I can only imagine in the psychology field, people are misdiagnosed all the time. Remember, guys, narcissists are conniving. Narcissists are chameleons. Narcissists manipulate. They manipulate the therapist, so they'll go in there. And they'll be on their best behavior. They they they'll know how to answer the questions. They'll know, they'll know, they'll know, they'll know. I I've worked with a lot of therapists myself on my coaching program. Believe me, they come to me and they're like, hey, I just want to talk to someone, you know, that that gets this shit, but that it's just like an everyday type of guy, right? Because we all go through this shit. And yeah, you you may be bookworm smart, but when you go through the shit, you know, when you go through the actual shit, it's like, oh man, I should have known better. I'm a freaking I'm a freaking doctor. I should have known better. You're dealing with a psychopath sometimes and they'll they manipulate you and they go unseen and sometimes therapists can't even see it. That's what's crazy about. It. That's why they go in front of a judge in front of, in court sometimes and they get away with shit. Because they managed to convince the jury that they're innocent. They managed to flip the story. A lot of criminal defense attorneys are narcissists, okay? Not all of them, but they sure know how to use the same tactics that narcissists use to convince the jury that their client is innocent. They know how to spin the story and make the victim look like the perpetrator, so, of course, it's going to be mixed, uh, misdiagnosis out there. Of course. The only way you're really going to know is to get an accurate diagnosis by, by a licensed professional. But that doesn't mean that the licensed professional can see through the lies and deception of a psychopath, of a narcissist. Okay? They, they, they work through deception. Through darkness, they blind you. It doesn't matter how much you know, they blind you. So yeah, I do agree there's misdiag uh, some misdiagnosis out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I mean, shit. I knew, I knew someone that told me they were borderline, and then six months later they told me, no, actually, um, I was misdiagnosed, and they told me they were bipolar or some shit like that, which is kind of like what you just said. Um, and I was like, same shit. You're still toxic. <laughs> You know, that, that didn't make it any better. And she thought it was funny. Cause, you know, she thought it was hilarious. Well, I, there's a video that I shared that story. That didn't end well. Uh, that didn't end well. Um, and they will turn on you. They'll turn on you mm, so fast. They'll turn on you so fast. 
And he was like, but wait a second. Like, I thought you were my soul. I thought, I thought, wait a second. I thought borderlines weren't like narcissists, but shit, this feels like a discard. This feels like a discard. And I don't care what the, in, the underlying intent is. The underlying intent, that, that's for like your psychology books. I'm talking about real life here, people. Real life. Are you, are you going <laughs> to, are you going to like, oh, because it doesn't, because it doesn't fit the textbook, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna let this person that's clearly gaslighting me and clearly sleeping with my best friend. I'm gonna. I'm gonna let them pass. I'm gonna give them a pass on this because mm, I. I don't think they're really a narcissist or oh, they're a borderline. If they're a borderline, that means that they they love me more than they love themselves. That doesn't sound healthy, but at least they love me. A narcissist doesn't even love, right? Okay, I'll give them a pass. No. No, uh, 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 that doesn't, that doesn't fly with me. That doesn't fly with me. Um, so yeah, that's why I use the terms loosely sometimes. That's why I'll say some shit and I'll be quick to vilify someone with borderline because I've, I've been with someone that's borderline and yeah, the fucking villain. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, does that mean that everyone that has that diagnosis is completely evil? Shit. There are some people that are narcissistic that I wouldn't consider themselves to be evil, but it's in their nature to, to manipulate. Someone was asking me, um, just, uh, I think it was just this morning, they were asking me, what do I think? Uh, if can narcissists have normal relationships or are they always manipulating everybody? And I'm um, probably going to make a detailed video about that. But in, in my opinion, yeah, they could have normal relationships. But at the end of the day, if there's an opportunity for, for them to extract something, to manipulate the situation um, in their favor, they're going to do it. They may not destroy and ruin everybody's life the same way a malignant, full-blown narcissist will, right? But they can have casual relationships. They can have relationships at work with coworkers. They can have relationships with their patients. They can have relationships with their clients. They can have relationships with people in their family and then their spouse that's where shit that's that's where the mask comes off that's where the mask comes off completely right that's where the spouse sees it and recognizes it and says holy shit this person's a monster and nobody else can see it because they have pretty cool relationships with everybody else but if you really pay attention if you really pay attention you'll see that it's always about them. They're always trying to get something, right? But you have to analyze it sometimes with, with a microscope. Um, let's see, what else What else did you say here? There was one more point I wanted to make. Um, yeah, the borderline will have that chronic fear of abandonment. Look, uh, I think a narcissist has that too. So there is a lot of overlap, but that that fear of abandonment can lead to the the person dating the borderline to feel guilty for something that they're not even guilty of. It's like, hey, that's, that's a you problem. I'm sorry that you have abandonment issues, right? I have no intention of abandoning you, right? I have no intentions of abandoning you, but the, the borderline is going to make it so. They're going to create the situation almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy, Almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy where they end up getting abandoned because if the healthy person realizes, hey, fuck this, I'm out, the borderline is going to take that as an abandonment. They're going to take that as an abandonment. And it's like, hey, you did that to yourself. And so the pattern repeats and continues and continues and continues. So honestly, for me, BPD, NPD, uh, for me, it's the same shit. Obviously, it's not. But for me, I look at it the same way. To me, it's the same red flags. Someone comes to me and tells me, hey, you know, this person's BPD, I'm going to, I'm I, the way I'm going to see that, I'm like, oh, they're a psychopath. That's how I'm going to see it. Why? Because I'm not going to, I'm not going to put myself in a position where I'm going to get burned by that motherfucker. That's the thing. See, I'm not going to do that. So um, clearly, clearly a full-blown psychopath and a full-blown nar narcissist is light years different than uh, uh, a borderline personality disorder. But having said that, I still don't want to be in that situation. You know what I'm trying to say? I'm still not trying to put myself in that situation. So the the labels get thrown around. They, yeah, will easily vilify something. We'll, we're 
quick to judge. Hey, you know why we're quick to judge? Because we were already burned. And a lot of us were burned more than once. A lot of us were burned more than once because we gave the fucker another chance. Okay? Because we gave those sons of bitches another chance and they did it again. And they did it again and they will continue to do it again. They will continue to do it again. Um, so I don't care. It's kind of like an alcoholic in recovery and have a lot of experience in that from the past. And it's like, you know what? Alcoholics, alcoholics drink. Okay. Alco that's what they do. They drink and they're living day to day trying to avoid that drink. That's a lot of pressure. Believe me, they're, they don't have a strong program. If they don't have a strong program, things get really, really difficult to, to keep that sobriety. Um, why would you want to date someone that's pretty much walking on eggshells with their own self? They're, they're walking on their own eggshells. That makes it very uncomfortable to the other person. Makes it very uncomfortable. Why? Because most likely the other person's going to be a codependent. It's just the magnet. is like They attract each other. Toxic people attract other toxic people. Okay? And yeah, codependents can be very toxic too in their own way. That does a codependent doesn't mean that they're like the good one. A codependent could be the bad one. They could very well be the bad one. Right? So they're going to attract each other. They're going to attract each other. And the codependent's going to try to fix the alcoholic or the or the borderline or the narcissist. They're going to try to fix it. They're going to try and fix it and be supportive and be understanding and it's not going to fly. The abuser is going to abuse. The victim is going to be victimized. So that's my point of view on that. Uh, feel free to challenge me or feel free to leave your, your thoughts and your experience in the comments below. But I do appreciate you leaving that detailed uh, comment. Um, I wanted, I just, I just, I just dropped the video and I saw it. I was like, you know what? I want to touch up on that because I, I do agree that there's a lot of overlap in the situation in, in the diagnosis. Um, and I know there is a stigma that BPDs aren't as bad as NPDs because they actually feel things and blah, blah, blah. But you know what? The victim of a BPD suffers the same nightmare that the victims from an NPD suffers from. So in my book, they're both just as evil. You know, psychopath is a lot worse though. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for today. Um, drop a like on the video if you got some value. And again, if you challenge my opinion, I welcome that. I like, I like debating um, and listening to other people's points of views. And um, hope you guys are having an awesome day or fantastic evening depending on when you're watching this video so i'm gonna sign off for the night my name is kita this is psychopath exposure i'll catch you guys in the next one peace out